Can I beat every Pokemon region as a hardcore Nuzlocke using the exact same Pokemon? This is the fourth video in this series where I take the Pokemon that I caught in a leaf green Nuzlocke and transfer them to each successive region. I've already beaten Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn, so now it's time for Sinnoh. The run starts as Rowan forces this unwanted fire monkey upon me. He didn't read the rules. But unbeknownst to little Barry, I have an ace up my sleeve in the form of Charmander, a now three-time champion. This so-called champion barely manages to beat a tiny little penguin and has one whole HP left, so not a great start. I then throw away this fire monkey, not unlike a certain anime character. You're out of here. After showing off all of my awesome Cantonian Pokemon, make sure to watch the previous videos to see where they came from, it's time to get going. Dawn shows me how to catch Pokemon, but again, I can't do that. Outside of Jubilife, Barry and I have our first real fight. The last one didn't count because I almost lost. I leap with Rockman, who doesn't even know any rock moves, so this bird lasts for quite a while. His second bird faces off against Butterfree, but Confusion is pretty weak, so he too lasts for a while. In the end though, neither of my Pokemon were even hit, and that was kinda pathetic. Let's see if Gym Leader Rourke can put up more of a fight. Just like our Roxanne battle back in Hoenn, I leap with Rockman who's about to level up, and then pivot into Woman Key who is under the level cap so she actually obeys me. Two low kicks later, and Rockman levels up and learns Magnitude. I get super lucky, and Rockman listens to me and uses Magnitude, knocking out Rourke's scariest Pokemon. The Onyx takes a few turns because of that pesky disobedient teenage phase, but before too long, I am the proud new owner of the first badge for the fourth time. But this doesn't raise the obedience level for my Pokemon, unfortunately, so I'm very concerned about the Mars battle at the Valley Windworks. This is a hard enough battle even when your Pokemon listen. A smart Knotweedle would easily defeat her Zubat, but after a single confusion, she refuses to do anything. I pivot to Woman Key, who seismic tosses the bat. Eventually. I leave her in to get fake outed, then pivot to Rockman to Rock Smash. After all we've been through, he still refuses to listen to me, and ends up at death's door before finally defeating this ugly cat thing. The start of these runs is always the hardest part, because there's so much luck involved. But that will all be over once I defeat Gardenia. Ace manages to hit Turtwig with Ember a few times, but continually refuses to listen, and can't even defeat a little turtle. Instead, Not Weedle swaps in to use a single gust. Cherim is also immediately gusted, leaving only the Roserade. She was doing well, but then Not Weedle takes a nap and confuses herself for no reason. Literally, the only thing she manages to do here is paralyze the Roserade. Not Caterpie heals the first stun spore, thanks to a berry, but is promptly paralyzed again. She does a decent job hitting with Twin Needle and after a focus energy and a crit, ends up winning with a decent amount of health left. She quad resisted all of Roserade's moves, so as long as I wasn't super unlucky, things were going to be okay. And finally, my Pokemon will listen to me once again. And you'd better listen to me and subscribe to the channel to continue this regional Nuzlocke experience. Now that I no longer have disobedient Pokemon, it's all smooth sailing from here, I'm sure. To prove my point, in the Team Galactic building, Ace defeats Jupiter all on his own. I think he's trying to make up for his abysmal Gardenia performance, but I won't forget that so easily. Cynthia then forces me to take this stupid egg, which again, I can't do. In Hearth Home City, I try to relive the good old days of walking around with my Pokemon like in Johto, but apparently they're all too <sighs> pieces around here, with the exception of Sparky. So I make it in and oh yeah, this is so much fun. This is a pale imitation of the Johto remix. What's even the point here? For the Fantina battle, I decide to leave with Guts, who we haven't seen in a while. She learns Crunch at a super low level, so she's a solid option here. Afraid that the Haunter might outspeed, I go for Sucker Punch, which fails, as Guts gets confused. Well that was sucky. $500 doesn't have Crunch, but Bite is still pretty good. After a hit on the Mismagius, I decide to bring Guts back out to finish off what she began. I didn't really need to swap after all. Barry tries to prevent me from leaving this city, so Sparky the Pikachu gives Terabia a piece of her mind. Squidward bubble beams his fire horse, then Sparky comes back out to Thunderbolt the larger penguin. Ace again tries to redeem himself by embering a plant. Alright Ace, you can come out of the chameleon house now. But I want a different fire Pokemon for the Maylene battle. 
Metatite falls to a single wing attack by Taro, bringing out Lucario. I was hoping for Machoke instead, so being the idiot that I am, I use Roar, completely forgetting the fact that it has decreased priority, because it's a move I never use, so I forgot about it. That was stupid. I mean, Taro is still alive, but I'm not in the best spot here. Big Nose is slowed down on the swap, but manages to sidebeam the Machoke anyway. After a Metal Claw from Lucario, I risk Big Nose to get another sidebeam in because I'm concerned Naruto might not outspeed. Of course, when I do swap in Naruto, he is immediately paralyzed by a Force Palm, so he for sure won't outspeed now. I'm expecting to lose Naruto to a Bone Rush here, but Lucario Drain Punches instead, leaving him with 8 HP. He is not fully paralyzed, and somehow manages to clench this victory with a flamethrower. Whoa, that was tough. By the way, you may have noticed my Pokemon were under the level cap there, and that's because anyone over 31 would not have listened to me. So that was another disadvantage I had. Okay, but for real now, we don't have to worry about any more disobedient Pokemon. Against a couple of grunts, Dawn's Clefairy and my Rockman make a pretty good team, as Clefairy drags those bats to the ground, and Rockman destroys everyone on the field. A couple of times, actually. On my way to Crash Wake's crib, Barry challenges me to another battle. Sparky once again wrecks his bird. Taro ancient powers the Ponyta, but doesn't get an Omni Boost. Cargo the Lapras confuses, paralyzes, and body slams the Primplup, and follows that up with an Ice Beam for Roselia. Against Wake, I decide to use a brand new Pokemon, Cousin It the Tangbrowth, in his series debut. I'd like to get an Ancient Power Omni Boost, but it's not necessary. It does get crit flinched, which isn't great, but after Sunny Day, it's all over for Wake. Thanks to Chlorophyll, it outspeeds and Solar Beams Floatzel, and the Quagsire too, though that was a bit overkill if you ask me. After the fight, some explosion happens, and I beat up Cyrus in a cave. More importantly, in Canalave City, it's on to yet another berry fight. This guy just doesn't know when to give up. As always, Sparky takes out Staraptor, and then Cargo surfs the Rapidash after a few tail whips. Naruto comes out on some toxic spikes to flamethrower the Roserade, though it does survive and uses Leech Seed before falling. For Empoleon, I pivot to $500 on a Bubble Beam, trying to bait out an Aerial Ace for Sparky, which doesn't end up working. Oh well. Last, $500 returns to Aqua Tail the Heracross. It's been a while since I used Ace, so let's prevent him from evolving for a few levels so he can learn Flamethrower under the Byron level cap. A Choice Bex Flamethrower takes out Magneton, and I pivot to Rockman to tank a Stone Edge before Earthquaking the Bastodon. I expected an Earthquake from Steelix, but Ace comes out on a Sandstorm instead. That's fine, because one more Flamethrower wins me the sixth badge. That was way too easy. I visit a few lakes to try and have a relaxing weekend, but Team Galactic had other plans. Whatevs, let's just throw down at the next gym. I decide to leave with Karate Kid, the Machamp, who I don't think I've used this entire series. He has no guard, so if I use him right, there can be no defense. Ace is blizzarded on the swap by Frostlass, which is not what I was expecting, but he still manages to flamethrower. The same goes for the Oboma Snow, though the Karate Kid makes a return on Pillow Swine Stone Edge and wins me the battle. In Galactic HQ, I have a remarkably uninspiring battle with Cyrus. Karate Kid revenges the Sneasel, and after a special attack boost from Charge Beam, Angry Eyes the Electrode, Thunderbolts the Crobat, as well as the Honchcrow. But don't you worry, we haven't seen the last of Cyrus. As a matter of fact, here he is right now. Karate Kid is getting a lot of action all of a sudden too. He revenges the Houndoom, before swapping to Rockman on the Crobat's Aerial Ace. A few rock throws baits out the Gyarados. I pivot to Sveal on a Waterfall, who hits with an Ice Beam, before pivoting to $500 to avoid an Earthquake. $500 defeats this imposter after a Dragon Dance and a few hits. Ice Fang one-shots the Honchcrow, but the Weavile survives Aqua Tail with a sliver of HP and brings $500 pretty close to death. But she still made it out alive and defeated Cyrus, who decides to stay in this depressing place for some reason. So I bust out of here, and the first thing I do is fight Volkner. Here, I've again decided to use a number of underutilized Pokemon who have been sitting in the box collecting dust. First and foremost, King. He is outsped, of course, but his King Engine Earth Power is too much for Jolteon. Electivire also falls to his Earth Power after a Fire Punch. 
Not sure why Luxray didn't come out instead. Not that it matters, since Earth Power one-shots him before he can Ice Fang. Against Raichu, I decide to let Wiglet Earthquake. After all, I don't think he's done anything since his appearance in Kanto. After getting the very last badge, I encounter Jasmine again, who you may recall from our last video, where Naruto flamethrowered through her whole team. So, she feels obligated to give me an HM. Barry did not get said HM, but somehow still ends up at the Pokemon League entrance in spite of, you know, the giant waterfall right in front. Anyway, I need to show Lil Barry that he doesn't belong here. The past few fights, I've been trying to use Pokemon that haven't seen a lot of action in this series recently, so here it goes. Angry Eyes still one-shots the Staraptor, and I pivot to Karate Kid on an Earthquake, responding with a Low Kick and taking out the Snorlax, healing with a Shell Bell. Rapidash brings out the Sun, which means Cargo Surf cannot go the distance. And then Barry swaps to Roserade. It's my turn to swap now into Ace, who uses the Sun to great results. For the Empoleon, Cargo makes a return to get healed with a Brine, and a few Thunderbolts later is the victor. $500 tanks a Heracross's close combat, and I was surprised that Bug survived a waterfall, especially after that defense drop. Weird. Oh well, she still wins, and waterfalls the Rapidash too. Come on, Barry. Did you ever really think us equals? I am a three-time champion level trainer, and you are you. Of course, I'm about to be a four-time champion. Here, I have decided to choose four Pokemon who have not been to the Elite Four so far this series. Again, I wanted to mix it up a bit here. I'm also concerned about Cynthia, so if I lose some Pokemon I don't care about as much, well, that's fine by me. Taro tries to get the Ancient Power Omni Boost, but to no avail. He then has to swap to King on the Scizor, who takes a ton from Iron Head and responds with a Flamethrower. This baits out an Ice Fanging Drapion, who King totally does not outspeed, in spite of the speed EVs I gave him, so he barely survives. Well, that did not go according to plan. Taro comes back out on the Heracross's Night Slash to use a Wide Lens Fly. He finishes the battle with a Rock Slide for the Vespi Queen. I should have known that Nidoking would not outspeed. He is brave, after all, but I thought the EVs would have been enough. Now it's on to Bertha, where Karate Kid actually manages to defeat the Whiskash without ever getting hit thanks to Dynamic Punch, Confusion, and a Dig. Gliscor is also confused, and then Taro comes out to avoid an Earthquake on the swap, baiting out an Ice Fang for Starman, who had a Lumberry just in case he needed it. He proceeds to Ice Beam the Gliscor, and then Surf through the rest of Bertha's team. Easy enough. Starman could easily do the same thing for Flint, but let's give Taro another chance here. If he can get even a single Omni Boost, then he could sweep Flint's team. But alas, three Ancient Powers yield not a single boost. That's too bad. I mean, he can still fly on the Infernape, but the Magmortar is too tough. So King takes a Thunderbolt, and I thought that would bait out a Flamethrower, but I guess not. That's fine. An Expert Belted Surf from Starman fails to get the KO, and Solar Beam takes him down to 7 HP. Well then, I guess that's what I get from trying to make things more interesting for you guys, huh? I should have just choice spec surfed everybody. Oh, and now you get a crit Starman when it doesn't even matter? The Rapidash is also surfed, but Flareon has Quick Attack, which would probably do at least 7 damage. King takes the hit, and he uses choice specs to Earth Power. That was not great, considering that Starman is one of my favorite Nuzlocking Pokemon. Losing him here would totally have sucked. For Lucian, finally I'm going to use Guts, who has been burned this entire time. A single crunch takes out Mr. Mime. Even with a Silk Scarf, this Gallade has a chance to survive a return. But if he does, I just lose Eradicate, not a big deal. And he doesn't survive. Sweet. Both the Alakazam and the Espeon take a priority Sucker Punch before Guts finally meets his match in Bronzong. Of course, Starman, who actually does have a Choice Bex this time, can easily take him out. After a heal, that is. Even without Facade, Raticate still did a pretty good job there, so maybe she's not as bad as I thought. But now, it's time for the real challenge, Cynthia, who is arguably the toughest champion in all of Pokemon. Karate Kid starts off by identifying Spiritomb, tanks a Psychic thanks to a Payapa Berry, and Dynamic punches that ghost right in its stupid dark face. Taro takes the Togekiss's Air Slash before pivoting to Zinx on a Shockwave. A Choice Bex Ice Beam is a one-shot. 
Karate Kid is Stone Edge by Lucario, Starman is Aura Sphered, before finally baiting out a Shadow Ball that Taro can handle even with a crit. A single Earthquake then takes him out. Starman is Surfed and Dragon Pulse by Melotic, but two Expert Belted Thunderbolts does the job. Roserade comes out and falls to a Psychic. Last, but certainly not least, is the horrifying Garchomp. But as long as I had either Zinx or Starman out when he appeared, a single Ice Beam would do the job. And that is why I love Starmie. He is so versatile, fast, and a decently heavy hitter. If I had to make a sacrifice, it probably would have been Raticate, but that wasn't necessary. And that wraps up the Sinnoh region. Ace and the gang are officially four-time champions now. I am going to take a break from this series for a bit to work on some other projects, but rest assured we will return and take over the Unova region. And I hope to see you there.